The Special Air Service, or SAS, is a special forces unit of the British Army. Founded in 1941, this unit performs a number of roles including covert reconnaissance, counter-terrorism, direct action, and hostage rescue. The SAS was established to assist in highly classified, more unconventional operations during World War II. In 1945, the war was over. The British government saw no further need for the force, and the unit was disbanded. But within a year, it was decided there was a need for a long-term commander unit, and the SAS regiment was re-established in 1947. The majority of the information and actions regarding the SAS is highly classified and is not disclosed by the British government or the Ministry of Defence due to the sensitivity of the operations. In fact, it wasn't until 1980 that the SAS gained notoriety worldwide after the televised hostage rescue during the Iranian embassy siege. After the reactivation of Team Rainbow in 2015, four SAS commanders were recruited to bring their skills and expertise to assist in the fight against terrorism on a global scale. These commandos were called Sledge, Thatcher, Mute and Smoke. Seamus Cowden, codenamed Sledge, is an attacking operator in Team Rainbow. Born and raised in the Scottish Highlands, Sledge has a physical presence that demands attention and respect. In his younger days, he was the captain of the 1998 Scotland National Under-20s rugby team. He has a strong desire for public service and went on to enlist in the army at the age of 18. After five years of duty, he was recruited by the SAS. To this day, Sledge still holds the all-time speed and strength record for the SAS qualifying physical exam. His professionalism and tactical abilities are top tier and made him an integral member of the SAS. He was expected to perform at the absolute highest level in his new role as a rainbow operator. Over time, Sledge developed operational expertise in breaking down barriers using a breaching hammer. His specialised tactical breaching hammer is known as the Kaber and can breach through almost all non-reinforced surfaces and barricades with a silent yet aggressive pace. Breaching hammers are nothing new to counter-terrorism or law enforcement, but what makes the Kaber so unique is its exceptional size and weight. For most agents this will be cumbersome and impractical, but Sledge's exceptional physical prowess makes him a formidable presence on the battlefield, allowing for quick and effective breaches. GPS satellites, unmanned drones, fucking laser sights. The more crutches you have, the more it hurts when they're kicked out from under you. If there's one thing I know for sure, it's that a six inch blade never loses reception. Mike Baker, codenamed Thatcher, is an attacking operator in Team Rainbow. From Biddeford, England, he comes from a family of dock workers. On his 18th birthday, he enlisted for active military duty. A veteran of three wars, Thatcher was the oldest SAS operative on active duty until he was recruited by Rainbow. He saw action at the Battle of Goose Green during the Falklands conflict. He was involved in the rescue operation of the Iranian embassy siege in 1980 and he was a veteran of the Gulf War. Thatcher's performance on and off the battlefield and during two major political conflicts made him a natural fit for VIP protection duty. He is highly proficient in close quarters combat and is a world calibre expert in anti-electronics operations. Thatcher is highly observant, calculating and decisive. While he may come off as grumpy and impatient, he has a profound sense of ethical responsibility. It is recommended to assign Thatcher with junior operators of strong moral conviction of whom he can mentor. Thatcher is equipped with EG MKO EMP grenades. When thrown, they will let out an electromagnetic pulse after a few seconds, either destroying or disabling all electronics within a 5 meter radius. Get ready. The 
Mark Shander, codenamed Mute, is a defending operator in Team Rainbow. Born in York, England, Mute graduated from secondary school at the age of 12. A child prodigy, he went on to complete an internship at a British tech company, where he worked on prototypes for a new security system. And then, at the ripe old age of 14, he was accepted into the University of Cambridge. Mute is highly intelligent and analytical. He is used to being the smartest person in the room. A man of few words, he prefers to be short and concise when passing information, and because of this he is often misread as being rude. Mute is equipped with GC90 Moni signal disruptors, which are portable devices that can be placed on the floor to jam electronic devices. Developed by Britain's government communication headquarters, the Moni was originally designed as a portable device that could black out any radio transmissions for covert or sensitive meetings between British government officials and foreign interests. As one of the primary engineers on this project, Mute created a variant of this device that has double the effective range of the original GCHQ signal disruptor. I know what you're wondering. What's in the canister? I could tell you. But then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> I'm only mucking about. Relax. As for what's in the canister, it's best you don't ask. James Porter, codenamed Smoke, is a defending operator in Team Rainbow. Smoke was not an academic, although in secondary school he excelled in science. He took a particular interest in biology, especially the topic of dissection. During his gap year, Smoke enlisted in the British Army, using a fake ID in order to avoid getting parental consent. After basic training, Smoke was stationed in Belfast, but he found the posting a bit dull in the wake of the March 2007 treaty. He went on to join the Army boxing team as a middleweight. Smoke is a thrill seeker with very little regard for his own personal safety. He is fearless in battle, and he can be a great asset for defensive manoeuvres. However, he seems to enjoy the havoc and chaos of war just a little bit too much, and he has an odd sense of humour when placed in stressful situations. Smoke requested a portable device system that could deliver the most damage to intruders in a targeted area. He was equipped with compound Z8 remote gas grenades. Using a remote detonator, Smoke can view the results from a distance. The mines are filled with a collection of biological substances that on their own are inert, but when combined, have a more volatile effect. The resulting concoction will damage or kill anyone exposed to it. Even if enemies are not caught in the gas, it's thick enough to act like a normal smoke grenade, blocking vision in the area. I'll continue to cover the operator teams, with the FBI being the next group. I'll admit, it's hard to find much on these guys, until you get to some of the new ones. But I have my Tom Clancy research team on this, so anything that comes up will be found. And by Tom Clancy research team, I'm really just talking about my go-to Tom Clancy law fanatic, Dranius. Anything I'm unsure of and want double checked, he's my man. Though I think he just started university, so... This channel might go to hell now. Hmm. Wish me luck. You can find Dranius on my Discord server. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!